Hello and welcome to RBC Online today. It's fantastic you could join us and I'm joined here by Mike as well. So it's, it's Mike and Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a interesting week. It has, so far, it? hasn't it? We've got a new government. We do, and, we do. Uh, and who, who'd be in Albo's shoes? Eh? Yeah. You know, <laughs> day one and he's off jet setting around the world. That's um, right. That's but right. Isn't, it, isn't it wonderful that we live in such a free democracy mm. that we can have a transition of government and uh, whatever side of politics you're on, there yeah. is this sense of smooth transition. Life doesn't get disrupted uh, mm. un unduly. And it, yeah. you know, it's peaceful change of government. Isn't that wonderful? We should yeah. never take yeah. that for granted. Eh? Mm. Mm. You've got so, to share yes. with us, yeah. Yeah, as we as we gather this morning, of course, and come to worship, I'd like to read from Psalm 33 and listen to these words of the psalmist. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music with uh, make music to him on the ten string lyre. And perhaps we could switch that for the guitar and the piano. Yeah. Sing to him a new song, play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. So this is the one we come to worship today. To live within the love 
Take the bread of life, broken for all my sin. Your body crucified to make me whole again. I will recall the cup, poured out in sacrifice. To trade this sin and resign for your new covenant.
Christ reached from the depths as far as east is from the west. So far your grace has carried me until I see you face to face. Until at last I've won my race. Remind me you're not finished yet. Hallelujah. 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 I live in remembrance. Well, hello, families who are joining us online. Um, we're so excited because we have reached the end of our series on resilience. Um, resilience means um, getting up even when you've been knocked down, yeah. right? I've got Ansi here to help me. Ansi, say hi to everyone. Hi. Yeah, so Ansi's one of our helpers in um, the Illuminate room, which is the year one to four space. And Ansi's been a really busy lady. So thank you, Auntie, for making time to come yeah. along and help me with this. Yeah. Yeah, how have you been? I've been a bit stressed, honestly. I've got yeah. lots and lots of tests and assignments. I'm in year 12, which whoa, whoa, is, whoa. seems far away for all of you guys. Yeah. Um, but it's quite a stressful year. And yeah, sometimes it just feels like I'm running a race and yeah. I'm never going to get to the end. Yeah. Sounds kind of hard. Um, sounds like some of the um, stories we've been um, learning about in Kids Church in the past couple of weeks. Um, each character that we've learned about was unique and every challenge they faced was also unique. But when they remembered what Jesus did on the cross, um, they kept going because Jesus also kept going, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll encourage you to do the same. Thank you. Yeah. Let's head on over and watch our teaching story for today. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Verses 1 through 3. Allie shoved her swimsuit into the bag along with the towel. Where are my goggles? Mom was trying to hold Allie's younger brother, Jack, as she wrestled shoes onto his feet. Check the laundry room. You dumped your swim bag there. Dumped your swim bag there. Dumped your swim bag there. I get it already. Allie. I know, I know, Mom. It's just what Jack does. Dumped your swim bag there. Allie bit her lip to keep from snapping back and ran to the laundry room. It was her biggest swim meet of the season, but Dad was on a business trip and Mom had snagged some big appointment for Jack with some new doctor. Grandpa will be here in two minutes to pick you up. I'm putting Jack in the car. Good luck with that. Allie snagged her goggles and threw them in her bag. Of course Jack was melting down again. This new doctor's appointment wasn't part of his regular routine. No one cares about my routine. Allie lugged her swim bag out the door to see Grandpa's beat-up Jeep behind Mom's minivan. Mom was trying to strap Jack into his seat, but he was flailing and flapping his hands. Rex Rex! Rex Rex! Rex Rex! Rex Rex! Rex Rex was one of Jack's gazillion toy dinosaurs. He spent hours lining them up and he could recite all of their names, Pterodactyl, Ichthyosaurus, and yet he couldn't manage a simple hello. Allie, could you run back in and grab Rex Rex? Uh, no, wait, I'll do it. I I've got to lock the door. Mom flew past Allie on her way back in and planted a kiss on her cheek. You'll do great at the meet, sweetie. I love you. Allie waved goodbye to Jack as she passed the van, but he wasn't paying attention. Sighing, she hopped into the Jeep beside Grandpa. Hi, Papa. Hi, Angelfish. All ready to swim? I guess. <sighs> Allie's mom tore out of the house, carrying Rex Rex, rawr, and made a beeline for the minivan, calling out to Grandpa and Allie. 
Thanks so much for doing this. It all happened last minute. Grandpa and Allie waved goodbye and the Jeep backed out. You doing okay? Yeah. Who's this fancy doctor? I don't know. He's some autism expert and there's usually like a six month wait to see him, but mom got a call an hour ago to come. Well, that's good for Jack, right? Is it? I mean, he's already going to speech therapy and occupational therapy and play therapy and I thought he was supposed to get better or something, but they did that big evaluation thing last month and now mom says Jack has autism and he doesn't get better. It's just the way you are. Well, that sure is a lot to think about. Hmm, you, you do some good thinking while you swim, right? I guess, but half the time mom has to pull me out of swim practice so we can get to one of Jack's therapy sessions. And she's already said if I swim this summer, I'm gonna have to miss a bunch. Sometimes I just, I want my brother to be different. That's awful, I'm an awful person. No, Angelfish, you, you've been running a tough race. I hate running. All right, swimming. You, you've been swimming really hard and you just found out there's no finish line. You're not really talking about swimming, are you? I always said you were the brightest fish in the barrel. <laughs> Papa. I know, it feels like your parents spend all their time and attention on Jack. I, I guess we all hoped that could change, but now it looks like change is going to be more of a 10,000 meter swim instead of a 50 meter sprint. Allie sighed and glanced up at the sparkling blue pool as they pulled into the parking lot of the Y. I'm just tired of it. I want a brother who likes to be hugged and play games and doesn't draw attention when he comes to my swim meets. It would be easier to quit swimming. They both stared at the neatly marked lanes in the pool. You got a minute before you need to be out there? Yeah, I think. What you're facing isn't fair, but everyone's story is different. Everyone has their own 10,000 meter swim, and there's only one way to stick it out. Extra practice? Well, that helps for sure, but I'm thinking about the Jesus kind. Can I read you a couple of verses? You're going to anyway. Grandpa tapped on his phone. Aha, Hebrews chapter 12. Let us keep on running the race marked out for us. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith and he is the one who completes it. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. Then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He made it through these attacks by sinners. So think about him. You won't get tired. You won't lose hope. Hmm. I never thought about all that stuff Jesus went through, like running a hard race. You think he swam too? Didn't need to, because he could walk on water. <laughs> Jesus paved the way for us. Even when we're tired and we messed up and we know we can get back up and keep going because we're loved and forgiven no matter what. I love swimming. I really don't want to stop. Good. Let's get you in that pool, angelfish. Allie smiled and hopped out of the Jeep. She found she felt a little bit lighter. Light enough to swim extra hard light enough to finish her final swim of the afternoon with a personal record. Amazing swim, Allie. Swim, Allie, swim, Allie, swim, Allie. Allie wiped water from her eyes to see Jack and Mom cheering near the gate. Jack wore noise-canceling headphones and cheered and jumped up and down, wildly flapping his hands. She noticed that he was looking right at her. <laughs> swim, Allie, swim, Allie. Allie smiled and flapped her hand right back at him. <sighs> they had a long journey ahead, but you know, Allie was ready to keep going. Wow, what a great teaching story we just watched. Yeah, that was really good, wasn't it? Yeah. What did you think of the little girl? I found it quite inspiring how she overcame all her challenges, yeah. um, especially when her grandpa helped her um, by reading out some scripture. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important that we should look um, to Jesus and what he's done That's right. to help us find the resilience to overcome our own yeah. challenges. Yeah, and when we face challenges, to actually use scripture to inspire us and to remind us that we can do it. Um, 
I love that description in Hebrews 12, where he, he, said, he tells what Jesus did. Um, and that should inspire us to be resilient and to keep going because of what Jesus did. So, Ansi, I know it's going to be a challenging year for you. Yeah. But you know what? You're surrounded by people who've done it before, who've done very really well, um, and just people who've just done it before. You know, yep. and they've made it through. That's right. I? They've just they've just gone through the year and done well. So yep. I want to encourage you. Just keep going because of what Jesus did. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Ash. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We'll see you next time, kids, um, for our June sessions. Well, thanks to Tash and the kids ministry team for uh, leading us through uh, this month's theme, the fruits of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit. Yeah. yeah. And right. uh, yeah, look forward to the rest of the month as we continue uh, through that time. But uh, just a few things to keep us up to date on. Um, just gathering interest around the, the coach mentor training. Mm -hmm. uh, if that sounds like something that you would like to be involved with, coming alongside uh, of someone going through some tough times, or even if you're interested in uh, kids coach, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and the way to do that is to uh, get onto the hub and um, you can uh, press the button about the coach mentor training interest and register your interest there. Uh, also as well, while we're on the hub, uh, we'd love to hear from you if you're interested in helping out online as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got some wonderful hosts who are here hosting you so well today. Um, you say g'day to those in the, in the chat uh, as well. Um, but uh, if you'd like to be part of that uh, ministry or if you can think of anything else uh, that you would like to be a part of, um, you know, to do with online, if you call online home, uh, I'd love to hear from you. And the way you can do that as well is uh, by going to the join the volunteer team and uh, just putting a um, putting your details in there, um, and then I'll be able to contact you and see what that looks like as well. Yeah, and that's not necessarily making a commitment, but just explore yeah. it. It'd be that's lovely right. if you're a part of this uh, online community. Why not serve that community as well? Mm. And of course, as well as uh, serving, there's that sense of the opportunity to give to the ministry mm. of RBC in all of its different uh, forms and its different communities and beyond ourselves as well. So on the screen there, you'll see how you can give and we'd encourage you to express the generosity of God through your giving as well. And we're gonna pray for the offering now, but as we pray, I'd also like to pray for our national government, our federal government, mm. and all those who are taking up new leadership roles, and uh, for us as a nation, as we seek to support them into this next season. So, yeah. will you join with me in prayer? Father, we, we do thank you. We thank you for the gift of the nation that we sit in. Boy, there's so many blessings in this country, and uh, forgive us, Lord, for many times when we take it for granted. But we thank you for those who uh, volunteer to service, put their lives on the line, uh, take up careers in politics. Lord, uh, we don't uh, doubt their motivation or their desire to see the best you know, for our nation. So we pray for all the political leaders who've been re-elected or elected this uh, past week. We pray that you uh, would give to them what they need to serve this country well. Uh, we would dare to pray, Father, that they would discover you in ways that surprise them as they serve. Um, and Lord, may you be on their horizon. <laughs> may your spirit speak to them. May they encounter you in the corridors of Canberra. Um, and God, we pray that they would be good leaders, uh, that they would lead for the benefit of the people of Australia, and that they would be generous to the people of the world. Give them great discernment and wisdom as they navigate all the varied political contexts uh, that they have to deal with. And we're very mindful of what is going on even right now in the South Pacific and uh, with our relationship with China in that context. So Lord, we as we uh, pray for them, uh, we, we pay taxes to facilitate that. <laughs> uh, we don't give a tax to you, God, but we give out of response of generosity to you. And so, Lord, we pray for the giving that is uh, being received this week. And we ask that in your kingdom's maths, you would just multiply it, that it would have great benefit to those in need, to those who are yet to hear of your grace. 
and that it would f continue to facilitate such things as RBC Online, Coach, and other Enriched Life Ministries, and all that we have in our heart to do. So we commit that offering to you and pray your blessing upon it. And we ask all these things, God, confident that you are able to do more than we're asking. Uh, and we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to come now, we're going to hear from uh, Esther McInerney um, in our last uh, Ephesians last Ephesians sermon. Yeah, last in That's the, the one. That's yeah, the word that's that I was looking for, yeah. sermon. Um, so let's come with our Bibles open uh, to hear from Esther now. The 2007 AFL Grand Final. As an Adelaide Crow supporter, I love talking about this Grand Final. Port Adelaide versus the Geelong Cats at the MCG. This match has gone down in history as a one-sided affair. By the end of the third quarter, Geelong led Port 125 points to 35. The contest was over and the Cats were victorious. And that's what, exactly what happened. Geelong took out the title with the largest grand final point margin in Australian history of 119 points. Imagine what it would have been like to play on that Geelong side, playing out the third and fourth quarters, knowing that you would take out the shield within minutes, knowing that it was statistically improbable for you to lose, yet still having to kick, handball, tackle and persist until the final siren. This is similar to life as a follower of Jesus. Jesus has saved us, set us free and made us conquerors, not through works of our own, but through the grace and salvation that comes from his victory over death on the cross. See, the battle is actually a victory march led by Jesus. However, the game is still on until the final siren sounds. When Jesus returns, brings judgment and restores the earth to himself. Until this point, we have to keep playing ball through this yes but not yet period. See, Jesus has won the battle, but the war is still on. Unlike Port's performance in the 2007 AFL Grand Final, Satan has been and is continuing to bring his A game. And dangerously, his attack is so good, cunning and strategic, that sometimes we may not even realize it's him. See, our, our opponent in this war is bringing arrow of anxiety, fear, doubt, panic attacks, depression, mental illness, arrow, physical illness, pain, suffering, struggle, arrow, persecution, greed, isolation, and the arrows go on and on and on. Author and pastor John Mark Comer says this. He says, why do I feel so tired? Not in body, but in mind. Why do I feel so battered and bruised? Why does every day feel like a battle just to stay faithful, to keep following Jesus? Well, here's an idea. Maybe because it is. Modern Christians and authors and influencers love to portray life as a follower of Jesus as a lifestyle. But it's actually less of a lifestyle and more like a war. It's spiritual warfare. Evil seems to be dominating our culture, our news feeds, and even our hearts and our minds. And this shouldn't actually come as a shock to us. So we have promised in 2 Timothy and multiple other times in scripture that we will face persecution and opposition. Which brings us to our passage for today, rounding off our journey through Ephesians. But before we read, will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the victor of the battle, Jesus, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would come now, would speak to us, challenge us, call us, mold us, and reveal more of yourself to us, Lord. And I just pray that only your truths from your word would ring true, 
and that everything else would fall away in this moment, Lord, I pray. Amen. So we're reading today from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay, so to understand and dare I say, join the battle, the first question we need to ask is, who are we actually fighting against? See, at the start of this letter to the Ephesians, Paul has explained that when we become children of God, we inherit his blessings, but we also inherit his enemies. In chapter 6, we read in verses 11 and 12 that these enemies include primarily Satan, but also his angels and other evil spirits of the spiritual realm. See, Paul is very clear that there is an ongoing spiritual struggle with the powers of darkness in this world. There are enemies out to destroy us physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. And you don't see that truth on a mug at Kurong, but boy, is it true. The message version puts it this way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk away from, forget about in a couple hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. So let's size up our main opposition. What does the Bible actually tell us about Satan? Well, firstly, we know that he's a real supernatural being and that he's active. In Ezekiel chapter 28 and Isaiah 14, we read that Satan was an angel created by God, but began to drift and tempt others into sin, rebelling against God, the fallen angel. C.S. Lewis puts it this way. He says, there is no neutral ground in the universe. Every square inch, every split second is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. In John chapter 8, Jesus um, is rebuking the Pharisees and he actually calls out Satan's influence over their words and actions. And Jesus describes Satan as a murderer from the beginning. He says that there is no truth in him and that he is a liar and a father of lies. Author John Mark Comer in his recent book, Live No Lies, proposes that Satan's main tactic in this war is actually to present us twisted truths temptations and lies that he knows will play on our disordered desires that are actually normalized in a sinful society. So now we understand who we are up against and what his main gameplay is. How do we actually join the fight? Well, our whole study of the book of Ephesians has actually been leading up to our passage for today. Paul has spent chapters and chapters outlining the gospel story, the theology behind Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And now Paul is giving us application on how to play a part in living out the gospel story in this world. And this is actually our story. And now we get to this exciting crux in the instruction, an epic battle call by Paul. We continue on in verse 13, and he says, Therefore... Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in this spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. But this armour isn't the type of armour that we can grab on sale at Aussie Disposals or Costumes R Us. We are, of course, talking about spiritual armour here. And this is not just armour for military men, but all members of the church, regardless of age, gender or social status. Paul reminds us that the power of Christ actively protects us from the devil's schemes, but we we each have a part to play in this. Each piece of armour, both defensive and offensive, is fashioned by his grace 
and must be actively put on to overcome Satan's temptations and attacks. Clothes, armor, they aren't fulfilling their purpose if they're sitting in our wardrobe, or in my case, on my wardrobe. The original Greek translation for the, uh, the word put on is enduo, which means to clothe or dress yourself with something. It is a verb, a doing word, and in this case, a command. As followers of Jesus, we don't actually have to rely on our own failing strength in the midst of crossfire. And we definitely don't need to carve up our own weapons, draw up our own battle plans, or cast our own armor. Jesus has freely given this to us. How quick are we to construct our own flawed armor when met with opposition? It's a common social media trend for fashion bloggers to share a picture of uh, what they're wearing on a particular day with the hashtag outfit of the day, OOTD. Well, let me continue to unpack in more detail what Paul considers to be the hashtag OOED, outfit of every day for a follower of Jesus. So firstly, we have the belt of truth. And this is our first part of our outfit of every day, a foundational piece of armor, which holds everything else securely in place. Paul firstly states the importance of truth because he believes the church's most basic equipment in any spiritual battle is steadfast belief and commitment to the truth of Jesus. Jesus says um, in John's Gospels that he is the way, the truth and the life and that the truth will set us free. See, back in the Ephesians time, the waist or the abdomen was thought to be the resting place of emotions. To gird this area with truth is to commit your emotions to the truth and hope found in Jesus. Followers of Jesus must hold a commitment to the truth of who he is, despite how we may be feeling and regardless of the repercussions. And this outfit staple goes hand in hand with the breastplate of righteousness. And this was worn like a jacket made from leather, iron or bronze. And the chest was generally thought of the place of the soul, the heart. The breastplate reminds us that we are forgiven and restored by the blood of Jesus. And it encourages us to keep our hearts pure. See, Christ's righteousness protects believers' hearts from false accusations and attacks. Romans chapter 3 says the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. See, followers of Jesus don't need to seek protection through their own works or works of their own, but can confidently stand firm on the battleground in what Christ has done on their behalf. Next, we move on to headwear, the helmet of salvation. Roman helmets were made from metal and leather and had long sides and backs which covered the head, neck and the shoulders with an obvious function. Protect the brain. The assurance, of the assurance of salvation we have through the blood of Jesus is the most powerful protection we could possibly have against doubts, anxious thoughts, fears, and even pride and self-sufficiency. And while Satan does use our pride, our doubts, our anxieties, even our mental health conditions to, uh, to his advantage to twist the truth, we can also cling to the fact that Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we can be saved. See, when we name Satan's lies for what they are, when we strip them of their power, we interrupt the subconscious neurological thought patterns and we replace this lie with the truth of our salvation. And this also reminds us where the battle is really heading, to Christ's ultimate victory over evil. Now we move on to another absolute essential of our hashtag outfit of every day, the Birkenstocks of the gospel of peace. Purpose designed military footwear was a battle essential. Soldiers wore sandals with cleats made of sharp nails designed to give them firm footing on even the most rugged terrain. Footwear enables fearless spreading 
of the good news of Jesus, even in the front line of the most challenging war face. The peace of Jesus empowers us to stand firm. Even when there is persecution, isolation and unrest and everything else seems to be crashing down around us. The peace of Jesus also equips us to step out in faith and share the gospel with our families, our work colleagues, to the minority groups, to the ends of the earth. Next we have the shield of faith. See, Roman battle shields were oblong-shaped, crafted from two layers of wood, covered with animal hides and bound together with iron. Shields were often held out or up together to make a wall or roof, and they were wet to extinguish flaming arrows. See, every day, Satan shoots fiery arrows of persecution, anger, temptation, illness, hate, and division our way. But when we cling on to our faith in Jesus, Satan's fiery attacks are extinguished and their impact diminished. Our radical openness and to and belief in Jesus' resurrection, power and protection is the most suitable defense to counter these attacks. See, taking up a shield suggests an intentional and resolute dependence in the hope we have in Jesus and his promises. And uh, this picture of, of a wall of shields is such a powerful reminder that we are not alone in this battle. See, God has blessed us with a community of believers to stand with us side by side, shield by shield against the constant attacks of the evil one. See, when one believer's faith is wavering, when they are feeling under attack, the others can help to keep their shield lifted. And I really want to personally thank the many of you online and in this RBC community who have helped me to keep my shield up through some particularly challenging battles of my own. And this shield of faith complements the hero of the fit, the most powerful and game-changing part of our outfit of every day. And that is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There were four main types of Romans, uh, common Roman swords. The most lethal named the Pompeii Gladius, which had parallel cutting edges, a triangular grip, and was the most effective at slashing an enemy at close range. Now, this is a very significant piece of armor because it is actually the only offensive weapon supplied by and used by the Holy Spirit. Its purpose to strike back against the powers and the attacks of the evil one. Hebrews chapter 4 says this. It says, the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. See, this is one powerful weapon. And this weapon is actually so powerful that Jesus used it himself to rebuke and shut down Satan in the wilderness. I wonder, do you know scripture well enough to use it in a battle? Have you memorized scripture to use against the devil when under attack and when feeling isolated? And this time tomorrow, when you head into your spiritual front line, when you walk into your job that you love or you, or you hate, when you stroll into math class, when you're sitting in your GP's waiting room, when you're home alone on your laptop, when you're struggling to get out of bed or get to sleep, when the devil tells you lie after lie after lie that plays on your desires, sends temptation after temptation your way, makes you feel alone, unworthy, ashamed, shoots arrow after arrow after arrow, will you pick up your sword of the spirit, rebuke Satan's meaningless, powerless trash talk and declare the promises of God, the truths of his word and the hope that you have in Christ. 
As we wrap this up for today, there is one more key parallel that we must draw. It's crucial that we realize that the armor of God is also the armor that Jesus wore when he walked on earth, when he was crucified, and the armor he will wear when he returns and sets out in judgment and salvation. See, when we clothe ourselves in the armor of God, we actually become more like the true victor of the battle, Jesus. See, the armor of God are the attributes of the messianic king. And we are called to mimic these each and every day in our own lives. Let's have a look at these prophetic pictures in Isaiah. In Isaiah 11, we read, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Righteousness will be his belt. The faith and faithfulness, the sash around his waist. Isaiah 57 says he will put on righteousness as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and he wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. See, Jesus Christ is the true and ultimate warrior and conqueror of this world. He paid the price for God's wrath and judgment. And he met this with mercy, peace, grace, and love so that you and I could have the honor of joining the fight, the pleasure of joining the victory march. John 10 verse 10 tells us this. It says, the thief, Satan, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, the true conqueror, have come that they may have life and life to the full. What good news for us to cling on to as we continue to fight through this war. What hope. But guess what, friends? The fight won't last forever. There's a sense of urgency with this command. In Romans, Romans chapter 13, Paul says this. It says, make sure you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. Get out of bed and get dressed. Dress yourself in Christ and be up and about. Can you imagine what our church, our neighborhood, our world would look like if every single follower of Jesus ceased being so naked, so oblivious, so distracted and apathetic and instead dress themselves in Christ, dress themselves in truth, righteousness, peace, salvation, faith, the Holy Spirit and joined the fight. So my question to you is simple. Will you armor up and join the fight? Will you armor up and join the fight? As I was preparing this sermon uh, for many months, actually, I really strongly believed that God was placing on my heart to pray for someone, someone who has been struggling to sleep for quite a long time now, who has been suffering maybe from diagnosed or undiagnosed insomnia and has been experiencing really intense spiritual attacks in the early hours of the morning with circling anxious and depressive thoughts. And I don't know why I think the spirit honestly put it on my heart to pray for you. And so I have been. Um, and if that's, if that is someone um, watching online today, I hope you know that I have been praying for weeks that you would know this, the work of the spirit, that you would feel the supernatural peace of Jesus clothing you, that you would be able to stand firm against the devil's attacks and settle to sleep, whether that's through miracle or through medical support. And if that is you, would you please reach out to me um, or one of the members of the RBC staff so we can pray for you? A few, we a few years ago, back in 2018, when I was a youth leader here at Ross Trevor Baptist, 
on our RBC Youth Camp, we ran a girls' devotion session that I will never forget. Mickey uh, led us in a powerful time of testimony and teaching, which was named The Devil's Lies and Christ's Replies. We each got given a large piece of cardboard that we were instructed to write a lie that the devil had been telling us on one side and write what we think Christ's reply would be on the other. Um, and this was a really powerful time for us. And so as I was preparing and praying, I wonder, I, I would really like to invite you to stand. And in a moment, um, I'm going to ask you to declare some truths with me as a prayer, but also as a battle cry. So I'm going to read the devil's lies. And I ask you to read together, whether it's in your heart or out loud, what Jesus has to say in return. I really encourage you to name it out loud because there's something powerful about calling out the devil's lies and physically calling out with your words, with your breath, Jesus' response. Today, we're going to put our sword of the spirit to work. And I pray that this would be a really powerful time of worship, of breakthrough and of transformation. So the word should be on the screen. The devil lies and he says this he says the word of god is outdated and irrelevant these days just pick and choose the parts you want to believe in but christ jesus replies and he says this he says i am the way the truth and the life the devil lies and he says you can still do what you want to do and be a good person and Christ says, your sins have been forgiven. You have been justified and made righteous through my blood. The devil lies and says, you don't need saving. You don't need Jesus. And Christ says, salvation is found in no one else but in my name. The devil says, you can't do this. You're not worth it. You're not good enough. Something bad is going to happen to you. But Christ says, my peace I give you. Do not be troubled and do not be afraid. The devil says you'll never be able to truly rest. But Christ says, I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The devil says you'll never recover from this. But Christ says, my, by my wounds, you are healed. The devil says you need blank, you need a baby, you need a house, you need a partner, you need a better job to be truly happy. But Christ says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. The devil says, Jesus can't really protect you. But Christ says, I am your strength and your shield. Put on the armor of God. I will never leave you or forsake you. The devil says, just give up the fight. You'll never win. But Christ replies and he says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. The devil says this world will always be broken. But Christ says, behold, I am coming on the clouds with great glory and power soon and you will be with me forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And fellow warriors, I send you out to fight with this truth. In Romans 8, it says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither Satan's angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any evil spiritual powers in this world, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation, not even Satan himself will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we are so thankful for the price that you paid Jesus, the price you paid to lead us into victory. We thank you, Lord, that nothing, that no thing can ever, ever separate us from you. We thank you for that truth. And we thank you, Lord, that you did not 
leave us on this earth defenseless, that we can freely clothe ourselves in your truth, your righteousness, your salvation, your peace, and we can stand firm and trust in your word. God, we pray right now for spiritual protection over the devil's schemes, for his lies, for protection from his twisted truths and his temptations, Lord. And God, we pray that we would be followers of you that strip down the lies of the devil, that actively through your protection and your power resist the works of the devil and that we keep our eyes fixed on you, the victor of the battle, the leader of the victory march, Lord. I pray today for anyone who may be feeling weary, who is close to giving up the fight. Lord Jesus, give them strength. Be their sword and their shield. Lord, be with them today. Strengthen them. Free them from strongholds, Lord, we pray. Lord, as we step in, out into our battles this week, into our fights and into our front lines, Lord, will you be with us? And overall, Lord, will you be glorified in this fight? We pray. Amen. Alone in thy sorrow and dead in thy sin, lost without hope, prayers to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, cry like the end. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart was given My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested, my life began Though your grace so free washes over I'm a prisoner, no my shame was a ransom, he faithfully bore, he canceled my debt, and he called me his friend, when death was arrested, and life I began, oh your grace so free, wash it Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as all heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in him. That's when death was arrested in my life.
Well, thank you, Esther, for finishing off our mm. uh, Ephesians series so well. And um, if you like, it has it? been brilliant. Mm. Yeah, both both parts of the series been a uh, good chunk of time we've spent in yeah. uh, in the book of Ephesians, and yeah, well worth continuing to explore that. Um, if you'd like to continue uh, to explore what Esther's been talking about uh, today. Um, you can find the going deeper questions and some prayer points in the notes section of our church online. Um, or if you go to our Facebook group, uh, which you can find in the button at the top of church online or, or search RBC online on Facebook um, and join that group. Mm. Uh, I usually post those there during the week as well, um, along with just the video. So you can rewatch that again if you would like. Um, but it's yeah important that we... yeah come into community as well throughout the week and uh, just be reminded of how good God is as yeah. well. And if you'd like prayer for any reason, and it may be out of the message, or it may be as you reflect on the message during the week, um, if you're watching now, you can uh, press the prayer request or contact one of the hosts. Otherwise, you could contact us through the hub at any time and uh, put in a prayer request and someone will follow that up with you as well. It's important that we are sort of wrapping around and, and journeying with you and partnering with you in what God is doing in your life at yeah. this time as well. Mm. Well, that's it. it that's is. it for us today. And um, yeah, we hope that you can uh, join us again uh, next week as we uh, yeah, continue unpacking God's goodness to us and God's love uh, on RBC Online together. Yep.